Welcome world, I'm John G. Adams with Modern Design Aquascaping. Our team builds custom ponds, fountains, and waterfalls out of natural stone and wood. And as you know, my goal is to educate and inspire the world about ponds and water features. Today's video is about our team putting jets on this recreational swim pond. If you're thinking about adding jets to a water feature, you need to understand why you put jets in and you need to understand how you put jets in so that you can maximize the results of your jet system in your recreational swim pond. So if you want to know more, stay tuned. And if you don't, bug out. Let's do it. You're doing this. The first thing I want to talk to you about is why you need jets in a water feature. I don't care if you're building a recreational swim pond or if you're just doing a more elaborate koi pond. Jets are super important because they achieve good circulation. You need to understand circulation is just as important as filtration. If you have the most amazing wetland filter on a big pond like we're going to have on this one and all of your debris just settles out into the bottom you're gonna have decomposing organic junk everywhere. The filter can't digest stuff that doesn't get to it. So the jets are what accomplishes that. They're gonna eliminate dead zones, places in your pond where the water flow just isn't as great as it is in other areas. Those are gonna be the places that encourage like whirlpool action on top. Stuff just stays in one place until it settles out. You've got places where there's like a big rock outcropping and the, the current just kind of goes around the outside of it. These are gonna be key areas where you wanna think about doing jets. I wanna show you how we lay this out and it's very difficult. So I'm gonna get out my fancy iPad and do you some really mediocre drawings to help you understand how we've moved the water in this feature from one end to the other to maximize the potential of the biological filter. So over there, from your side where you're looking in is the intake area for this pond. All pumps pull through the intake. That's super important to understand because the water is all flowing towards you. So what you have to consider then is, where do my waterfalls come in? Because they're gonna create a natural surface flow. There's a couple things I wanna achieve with these jets. I wanna sweep the surface of the water and push all floating debris because there's gonna be a lot of leaves and stuff falling in here. I want all that surface debris to push into the intake area. We're also gonna have waterfalls coming in where things are gonna settle out because the speed of the water coming in from the wetland filter is pushing that surface and as it spans out coming into the pond, the debris is gonna drop out of suspension. That is gonna create a collection area down below over there. We need bottom jets to keep that stuff stirred up and push it all into this intake area. The last thing I wanna think about when we're putting jets into the pond is, where can we create some really fun spots for the fish to play? because fish love current areas. So if we're gonna put current over by a big interaction stone, place where the kids are gonna sit and put their feet in the water, we wanna put some jets in there and try to combine this circulation with the fun factor so that it encourages fish to play in these areas. So as we move around in here, I'm gonna show you this overhead view and I'm gonna show you how we're adding water flow in to maximize this current push into the intake bay. This is number one. This waterfall in this side of the pond is simply for decoration. It's for a view from the house, but it's going to create a large, we're gonna have about a 12,000 gallon per hour flow coming off the surface of this waterfall. And it's pushing out basically, it's gonna come into the pond and go straight across the surface towards that intake area. area. The, 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 the intake area, the intake bay, call it what you will, make up a name, it's fine. The second waterfall is coming over here from the wetland filter, which is gonna be way out there. But we're actually gonna have a waterfall that joins the flow of the wetland on that end. And we're gonna have a 50,000 gallon per hour flow coming from that direction. So we're gonna have a huge surface push coming in from this end of the pond. That's gonna have us covered out into there as far as just pushing the water off the surface. Third interaction area is the beach area over on the other side. And of course, you know, there's going to be another video about how we build the beach. But a very important thing is that junk doesn't collect on the beach. And it's far away from where the stream rolls in. So we have jets pushing on the beach area to sweep all the debris out of there to keep that nice and clean for the kids. So these main flow areas are the basics that we have to work with. 
So when I draw those in on my sketch, I'm gonna say, okay, now where naturally is the water flow? Gonna leave these dead zones around the outside, and that's where we wanna focus on our jets. So let's walk around and look at how we do the surface jets and what the purpose of those is, how we're laying those into the design, and then how we work the bottom jets in to maximize the stirring action up off the bottom to keep debris from settling out so that everything works A-OK -okay, just like it's supposed to. Let's go check those out. So guys, I brought you down here into the bottom of the pond because I wanna show you this bottom jet. Like we talked about before, the goal of the bottom jet is to stir up debris and up above me is the wall that leads into the intake bay. So this is a pretty steep vertical stone wall, about five feet high. And whatever current's coming across the bottom from the other end of the pond, it's pretty much slowed down by here. So this is a perfect place for things to fall out of suspension right before it goes into the intake bay. But we've run a two inch line all the way down here to the bottom. We reduce down to the size so we keep our flow by using larger pipe. Then when we get to the location of the actual jet, we reduce it down. Here I reduce it down to an inch and a half because I want to maintain a large volume of push without much velocity. If I wanted to lose some of the flow, but really spray more water out, I would reduce down to an inch or maybe even a three quarter inch fitting. And then what you do is you don't have near as much water flow coming out, but you get a lot more of a spray action coming out of your jet head. So it depends what you're trying to achieve in a given area. Here I have the jet pointing almost across the bottom, just a little bit up. And the goal is to sweep this debris up off the bottom so that it just goes right over the top into the intake bay where it can be collected. I wanna keep the work of the maintenance crew down to absolute minimum. And if I can keep them only working in the intake bay, they don't have to spend a lot of time in here cleaning out the bottom of the pond. The jet system is doing its job. So here we are at a surface jet. And this is something else I wanna show you. So we do use our laser stick on these when we're putting the surface jets. And again, the goal of this is to push debris on the surface of the water out and encourage it into the mainstream flow that's going into the intake bay. So we shoot our water level, make sure we know where that is. That's a whole nother universe for you to understand where water level is. Don't guess, it's not a guess thing, it's a laser thing. This is where we lay out our jet, kind of with our water level. And you can see the angle that we have on this jet. The water is actually spraying up at a light angle to create this surface flow. So the waterfall is coming in from over there. It's creating a surface flow that's going around to the intake and we have this sort of half moon area over where I'm sitting at where there's not gonna be a lot of flow. So we position this jet on this side with the smaller reducer we've reduced down to one inch. That's gonna give us more velocity and more of a jet action and less of a flow rate. So that's gonna push this dead area out into that mainstream that's coming from the waterfall and that water's gonna circle right around and go into that intake bay so that the intake can do its job and capture the debris. Guys, I hope you enjoyed all this. I hope you learned something. I know you're gonna have some questions about how to lay out your circulation and your jets in your pond. So hit me up down there in the comment section. If you didn't learn anything at all, I'm sorry that I'm just not for you. So just give me the thumbs down and then you know, I still win because thumbs down is better than nothing. Thumbs up, thumbs down, two thumbs up. Guys, I appreciate you, man. I don't know what else to say. Comment, subscribe, like, all that. Reach out to my kids on Facebook. If you want to check out Modern Design Aquascaping on Facebook, the boys do stuff almost daily on the cool projects that they're doing all around the Knoxville, East Tennessee area while I'm out gallivanting around the planet doing stuff like jet information for people like you. Thanks for watching. I'm done.